The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunny. Let's yes. talk about let's talk about books. Let's you talk see. About People always say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal and mostly hardworking employee at my local bookstore for almost 17 years now. Yes. 17 years. And as such, I really do have my sweaty fingers on the pulse of the book world. And I am here to shove my sweaty appendages in your mouth with this week's unforgettably forgettable installment of notes from the bookstore i don't know what kind of accent that was but i stuck i stuck the landing (laughs) and your local bookstore has had a busy week this past week the district manager is coming for a visit which he does a lot like a ridiculous a massive amount of time and he, and he he comes for visits a lot because we're in the middle of nowhere Oklahoma so our district manager's area his district his kingdom as you were yeah. is a very small a very small district i mean when i worked in california we had a district manager that we barely ever saw because his district was so freaking huge in northern california that visits from the district manager were like were like when an ancient explorer returns from a voyage. But you I know, do I, I do appreciate your corporation and the way it breaks up its regions every year at at I forget which, either Pensac or Estrella. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have different regions and then once a year we fight each other, just like the Hunger Games. The Hunger Games is based loosely based on my bookstore chain not a lot of people know that so anyway when we worked in california you know we'd see our district managers so so very little that he would just arrive i return bringing gifts from far away realms your majesty this name tag is from the dark desolate realm the locals call oakland But here, the district managers got, what, like maybe eight stores in two barely literate states? Yeah. So what that means is that he's once again showing up for his two to three time a month intense inspection. Mm -hmm. So, yay? In fact, the only good part about this visit is that by some bizarre divine, divine intervention... His visit is actually happening today, which means that for once in my life, I actually get to miss a district manager visit. I don't know how this happened because I'm almost (laughs) always there when he shows up, but I finally get to miss one. So I just want to thank God and Krishna and Vishnu and Torgo and the master and Manos and all of the Toga wives the master has in his den. I'd like to thank Ed Wood and I'd like to thank Joe Pesci. Because I'm, I'm just literally always there for a visit, and suits make me nervous. I get hives all over, and it's not pleasant. Yeah. So I'm missing the visit. So thank, well, thank various, I guess I should say, because I have a lot of deities that I thank. I just like to cover my bases. Yes. You know, just want to thank, praise Allah. Praise Allah. And if I, if I, if, and that Allah definitely. Allah. Just saying that put me on another government watch list. Yes. And another reason why this past week was busy at your local bookstore is because of the big field trip that we had in the store. And I would like to take this time, this podcast time, to address what transpired this week in regards to the field trip and, of course, the ongoing police investigation into said field trip. So this is this is what I know. We were contracted by a group. We were contacted by a group that identified itself as Najumbo. Okay. They said 
that they were interested in bringing a group of low-income teens and preteens into our store for a little visit, a store tour, and a nice lunch. So, the violence that transpired at the store in regards to this field trip was only partially our fault. In retrospect, we probably should have done some research into what we honestly assumed was a nonprofit organization that was simply called Najumbo. There was really no way we could have known the truth. Okay? okay? How could we have known that they were a tribe of cannibals? There was no way for us to know. No. There was no way for us to know. I mean, how did they even get a hold of us? They've never even seen a phone before. So, like, what the bleep, right? I mean, I just don't get it. But So, so you, but, you had missed that New York Times piece on them a couple of years back. Yeah, apparently. I don't read the New Yorker. Yeah. So, of course, of course, our thoughts and prayers are with all of the 69, 69-year-old grandmothers from Duluth who got digested during our field trip last week are bad. Are bad. Okay. We apologize for that. Now, also, I would like to address... While, while we're on the subject of controversy, uh-huh. I would like to address a few rumors concerning a certain very popular product at our store. I don't know how these nasty, vicious, completely fabricated rumors get started, but I'd like to address them now. Yes, we had fidget spinners in the store. No. We do not carry fidget spinners at our store at the present moment. We are just all sold out. We're just all sold out. That happens with products. Nothing suspicious there. We certainly did not have to return all of them because they were becoming sentient and killing people. That is a complete falsehood. Yes. And I don't know how these rumors get started. No. Now, completely unrelated, if you did well, purchase well, a fidget spinner. Okay, go ahead. At your local bookstore, please don't taunt it. <laughs> please do not taunt your local bookstore bought fidget spinner. Don't make fun of it. If you're going to put it down, it's nice. It, it's recommended that you put the fidget spinner down gently and then quietly back away while yes. still keeping your eye on the fidget spinner. Don't turn your back on the fidget spinner and don't taunt it. It's also a good bet not to not to get it wet. And, and just, while we're in the neighborhood, I would just like to say rompers are stupid. Rompers? Yes. You, but you mean when? Like- when has men's fashion ever not been stupid? You mean you mean like those nineteen seventies onesies? The ones that the ones that they're they're doing now, yeah, they're they're basically onesies. They're short. Okay. Ones. They're like baby clothes because I had yeah. two little boys in my room today wear them. Yeah. Well, oh, look, you're because, wearing man rompers. Cute. Because I want one of those 1970s onesies that men used to wear. You know where it's yeah. all like denim. Well, it's well, like well okay, you would go with the over. denim. I'm I yeah. am definitely the lime green leisure suit, the polyester type. Yeah. Yeah. But I want like an all denim onesie, you know, showing off my lack of chest hair with like a ridiculously long V neck going yeah. all the way down to my belly button. I want that so bad. I would wear that nonstop. Nonstop. Every men's fashion has been stupid forever. And men yes. don't wear them. <laughs> yes. Absolutely agree. Now, Let's get out of the break room and onto the sales floor by talking about books. There are some hot new titles that were just released, so let's talk about a few of them now. Okay. Um, Al Franken has released a new book that is selling very well. Yes. It's called Remember Me, I Used to Be Funny. Yes. 
really excited about this book. Al Franken actually writes a book a decade just to remind people that he used to be funny and rebellious and take risks instead of being a corporate and political shill. So this is just his once a decade book. Al, it's telling surprisingly yeah. well. Let me let me Good just throw. take a moment here. Al, I really love you, man. I, I do. I love you. I'm a big Al Franken fan, but funny? Dude, you were never all that funny. <laughs> What's Davis doing? What's the can we, yeah, exactly? Can we ask that? It was Franken and Davis. What's Davis doing? Does he 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 definitely doesn't have a political career? Was he running a used car lot in Fresno, in Mexico somewhere? I I suspect that Franken and Davis may have partied one night with the Rolling Stones. Ah, uh, yeah. Temecula, something about a swimming pool. You know who else has a new book out? J R R R R R R Tolkien has a new book out. Really? Yeah, six R's. They recently uncovered four more R's in his name. <laughs> Very excited about that. And the same people who discovered the R's discovered a manuscript previously unknown. In fact, it was it was hidden very well. They found it in a locked file cabinet in a disused lavatory with the sign on the front that said "Beware of the Leopard." <laughs> I so had like, actually seen a preview of this book um somewhere somewhere I forget what I was searching for but I found the found like the first page or the first chapter or whatever and I don't know it, it's it's a token masterwork you know just dearest frodo please remember to bring bag of frozen peas we need toilet paper yeah it's a bit it's a bit ridiculous the book is 89 pages long yeah. it's in pieces the ending is missing and there was a handwritten note on front of the manuscript that said horrible horrible book never published and it was underlined five times so of course now it's being published <laughs> the book is actually called who cares you know you'll buy it <laughs> Good title. The description of the book, like if you open up the hardcover and you're reading the inside jacket, the description of the book is just the title over and over again. <laughs> Who cares? You know you'll buy it. Who cares? You know you'll buy it. Who cares? You know you'll buy it. And of course, it's selling wonderfully because Tolkien. Yes. Slightly related to that, I have a wonderful new uh, uh, business opportunity that you and all the listeners are going to want to get behind. I want to do a new sort of audio book, okay? Yeah. Because audio books, they've been around for a long time, and people are just bored with them, so I have a new type of audio book. And they book. still I have not it... come out with the pop-up audio book. No, they have not, and oh. that's just sad. So I have a new type of book. I call it the audio commentary book. Okay. So it's a regular old audio book. But over the reading of the book, we also layer on top of that various famous people talking about the book. Mm -hmm. First off, Leonard Nimoy reading I Am Spock. But over that is William Shatner talking over the book <laughs> about how all of Nemo's, Nim, Nimoy's stories are really about him. <laughs> so Leonard Nimoy's there. My mother died, and I was so sad. Then suddenly you hear William Shatner. Yes, I remember that, and I was also sad. I was actually more sad than Leonard was. Yeah. Let me tell you about how sad I was about his mom dying. I, I, In fact, I think my <laughs> tears were better. I think I had better tears. Yeah. My tears were stronger. Secondly, we get Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. And over that, we we layer on top of that learned scientific commentary by noted intellectual Mark Wahlberg. I, I, I would get Rosie from the Jetsons. No, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Mark Wahlberg because he, he, Stephen Hawking is, he, you know, his book is talking about black holes. And then suddenly you hear, Hey, speaking of black holes, when I did that last Transformers movie, I banged two black chicks. <laughs> At the same time, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> hey, 
Did you see Entourage movie? And then Stephen yeah. Hawking's then Stephen Hawking's audiobook stops because Stephen wants to listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And finally, this is the last idea I have for the audiobook, but this is the one that I came up with first. This is the first idea I had, and it I think it's a gold idea. Um okay. You get J R R R R R R Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. You put on top of that commentary by fellow J R and the King of Wrestling commentary, good old Jim Ross. All right. So you have Jim Ross doing commentary for J R Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. So, oh my God! Oh my God! He's throwing him into Mount Doom. <laughs> Oh my God! I think and remember, that's and remember, there's going to be a special pay per view event coming when they get to Misty Mountain, which should be this Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. It's going to be a slobber knocker. Oh uh, my God! Look at the size of that spider. You know, <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. Sam Gamgee's running into the ring. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it for notes from the bookstore this week and remember you too can save 10% on all of your purchases and all you have to do is send us a notarized letter photograph and DNA sample of a blonde haired blue eyed Asian woman <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard I'm pretty sure you just need to track down the woman from Pentatonix. <laughs> pretty sure she's available Maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. And cut. <laughs>